So, uh, welcome to my presentation about uh, Soju performance. I had uh, in the last year a few issues. Like whenever I debug uh, solutions from clients, we run into the same things. Um, the application may be slow in some parts and we have to figure out why. So we start to measure because we can make big trouble if we start to optimize things before measurement because our optimization may be qu quicker or slower or may introduce bugs. So the first thing is we measure it because most code just runs once, maybe on the user click, and whether it takes one milliseconds or 10 milliseconds, the user doesn't care. But if you have a loop doing something a thousand times, then every millisecond counts. So we are trying to find the bottlenecks, the things that make our solution slow, and then optimize the project by doing some things faster. And one thing I noticed all the time is um, there are things in Soju itself, which should be faster. So I reported a couple of issues to Sojo. And then something mag magical happened. I got attention. <laughs> you may have noticed. So, so Sojo 2023 release 4 got a few improvements. For example, stack overflow check got faster. The main thread check got faster. The C long function got faster, and some other mass functions. The is empty function got faster, and especially the background tasks function got faster. So these are five things that got improved in, in the release four, and I was very happy to see that because it makes all your apps a little bit faster, depending on what your app does. <coughs> so let's take a look in detail. So we have a background task function, and this one is used by the scheduler for the threads to decide whether um, a thread needs to be suspended and another thread get the attention of the CPU. And the question is, how does it determine it whether it needs to switch to another thread? It checks the time. So how long is the thread already running? What other threads are waiting? So do we need to make a switch? And there's a function used uh, to check the time to count, and that one got improved to, uh, for macOS to tell the time faster. There's a little difference in this timing functions. Like you can ask the operation system for the time now, which takes some time because it needs to synchronize with the system kernel to actually get the time value precisely. Or you could say, oh, I'm okay with the time value from the last test switch, which may be a microsecond off, but for the uh, thread switching, this doesn't matter. We don't need to know it to the microsecond exactly. The millisecond would be enough. So here you see some um, samples of a um, test application. And in the first uh, application, we see the runtime background task function is really taking uh, a lot of time. So depending on what, what the rest of the loop does, uh, this can be more or, or less. And uh, the test app spends a lot of time just to measure the time. So if you see that, 8.6 and 8.4 is just for checking the time. Uh, this is a little wasteful. So we optimized it, and now they are using uh, a different function, uh, clock get time, to get the time. And um, this function is much quicker to check with the kernel for the current time. And because this function um, uses so much less time, um, the rest of the runtime background function takes more time in this sample. So actually, it got much faster, and this number uh, doesn't really represent it because uh, this is a dummy app, so it can be different. And we did some measurements. So like if you do a loop, maybe a few million times, we figured out in the old soldier version, it would take 13 seconds and in the build up one second. But then we turned out that 
here with the debugger. In the new version, it's, it got quicker already because well, the debugger slows down the application. But the build time, really, you see, it's about half the half the time needed to to check for the for the loop. Next thing was stack overflow checking. Stack overflow checking is done whenever your application uh, enters a method to check if space is available. The stack is growing down from the address space and your other allocations are growing up and if they collide and the stack is full, then you would have a crash. So Sojo raises a stack overflow exception and it avoids uh, overwriting some memory and really prevents your app from um, crashing, especially also it prevents your app from endless recursion. So eventually you get an exception if you have a method which calls itself a lot of times. You can disable it with a pragma if you need. And a an sample would, here, would be here. So the runtime stack check had a little, let's say, bug that it always checked uh, the uh, stack trace. So when you get an exception, you have the stack trace to tell you which method called which, which method. And this happened unnecessarily a lot of um, in the uh, runtime stack shape. So we talked uh, with uh, Sojo engineers to get that removed. And so we got a lot of better times. So the stack check happens for every method call. So this is a huge improvement. And now even in the debugger, we are faster than the build app used to be. <laughs> so and, uh, you see this is a huge improvement for the test application. And you may notice it in every app you have. Next thing, there is a main thread check. So whenever you call um, user interface a class method like just setting the enable property on a push button, Sojo will check if you are in the main thread. If you are not in the main thread, it will uh, raise an exception. This is to prevent crashes because the functions from the operation system on Mac, Windows, Linux don't do the main thread check. They may work most of the time, but let's say if one thread would access um, the list of controls while the other thread creates a new control, you would get a crash. So it's good that uh, Sojo checks, but um, this used to be slow because uh, Sojo would internally check if there's a current thread. And uh, we got it changed to use a global flag, so just check if we are main thread or not. So this got improved also a lot. So when, when we set uh, the enabled property of a control, we see that enabled is uh, called with the getter or a setter. And then you see the UE trap function running. And this one first goes and looks where's your application, where's your current thread, gets it, checks if it's the main thread, and takes a lot of time, like here, locking the object, unlocking the object. I mean, just for the getter. It's a bit of waste. And so all this thing happening here is uh, most or less unnecessary because they could just check a global flag uh, for this. And so we got improvements again. So our little test app, which does really set a lot of flags, you know, a lot of enabled properties. <laughs> and so it's now in the debugger faster than it used to be in the build app. And I'm very happy to see this little change. Um, then another one. Whenever you pass a text uh, to a function which uses an underlying um, C function, you need to check for the text encoding. So the function did use to simply take whatever string you pass and then convert it to UTF-8. But your string is maybe already UTF-8. So there is no need to call convert encoding if, if the encoding is already correct. So if you can check, and in my plugins I do the, this, um, this type of check already, like if you pass me uh, in a plugin function um, a string, I will check uh, the encoding flags uh, set. Um, so if it's UTF-8, 
I may just take the bytes in the string. If you pass me a string which is marked as being ASCII, also fine. I can just take the bytes and use the same code as for UTF-8. If you pass me uh, something like a Windows encoding string or Mac Roman encoded string, ISO left, ISO um, encoded string, I would uh, check if it's also just ASCII characters. And then I can use it like an ASCII string. And if not, I can still call convert encoding to make me a UTF-8 string if I need that. So if we handle the strings a little bit uh, more efficient, we can have faster functions. And C-long function is one used by a lot of other framework functions to well, convert from a string to a number. So if you see that uh, the C-long function is called, it basically spends almost all the time to convert the string encoding. So by just removing this, uh, if the encoding is already correct, you can save a lot of time. That was uh, the measurements from the test app. So you see, well, the numbers are wonderful. <laughs> But of course, this is a test app. It just does calling C long in, in a long loop. Your normal app doesn't do that as much. But still, you may enjoy that uh, maybe your app compiled in uh, 2023 R4 or 2024 version is now maybe 10% faster than it used to be. And with the stack check and um, the background task, that also helps a lot for the web apps because all this uh, code to, to pass uh, the requests from the browser and to assemble the HTML and assemble the JavaScript to go to the browser, all is written in Sojo. So I think Ricardo's uh, web framework benefits a lot from this. So another thing um, we, we found is that some people like to use the SMT function. And the SMT function basically checks if a text is empty. It should technically be optimized to just check if the string is a sneal, or, but uh, it got at least changed to use the bytes function instead of the length function. You may wonder, what's the difference? And for an American, there is no difference <laughs> because they only have ASCII text. But in Europe, we have accents, we have umlauts, or the Asian people have Asian characters. And for them, the length function is really slow because it has to go over the bytes and actually count how many characters you have because it returns you the number of characters. But the bytes function just makes a lookup how many bytes do we have in the string and comes back. So bytes is magnitudes faster. <coughs> and here we see uh, a stack trace. So we see is empty being called which basically more or less just calls length and see if it's zero. So it calls here the function to check the characters and then get the string and, and loop over it and it takes, it takes time. So you see, um, it got a bit faster. So wonderful, we are, we are again quicker in debugger now than we used to be in the build app. And I don't know how often you call is empty, but if you want it to even big, be faster, just compare uh, the string to, you know, empty empty quotes. That's even faster than is empty. So I can show you a few more things that could be improved in the future, you know. So let me let me tell you about a few of them. So. Let's say, for example, if you call locale current, you may have seen in the training uh, a few days ago that I cache this. I ask local current and prefer to put it in a local variable. Why? Because every call, every call to local current will make a new object. It will call the operation system to get the local information, make a new object, and give it to you. So this is a kind of expensive call. You may not notice it. I would prefer if Soju could cache it and say, the operation system sends out uh, some notification if the local ever changes. So, or 
at least use a time function to maybe make a new object every five minutes and keep the old one around, so if you call it several times. Or we have things like inline mass functions. Like if you call a mass function like uh, square root, it's actually a function call. But uh, you could uh, change this, so the Sojo compiler could pass it as an um, square root instruction to LLVM, and then LLVM could either perform the calculation if you call it on a constant, or use a, a CPU instruction if the CPU can do it directly, and avoid the function call completely. Same for here, runtime max and min, which are also function calls. So, um, yeah, string compare. Uh, Sojo strings are usually defined um, that they can be nil. So, uh, so actually, the string is a nil if, it's no, if there is no string. So you could optimize it and do the uh, test for being empty by just checking for nil, and uh, this would even uh, make it string mo uh, the string operation much faster. So, yeah. Okay, and now I want to show you how I do these measurements because you may want to do uh, some measurements yourself. So let's take uh, here the stack checking application and load it into like, um, this is the older version, yeah. So we can see the test project. This is a test function. Uh, the test function uh, calls test. It's just doing a thousand, thousand times, calls a method. The method then calls another method where I actually disable the background task to make it faster. I don't want to measure both. So just a hundred thousand calls to a function which does something, so it's not optimized away by LVM, you know. Sometimes you, you, you try to optimize and then, because you want to measure, and then you notice that it goes quicker and you are happy, but the compiler just throw away your method completely. <laughs> so, it's like if you, if you code something like, uh, no, and now if the compiler is, is it's very happy, it will just replace this uh, with nothing. So, so I, can, uh, I can run this. And now I have here uh, the activity monitor application included with Megos. So I can uh, search for the app. I can click test here. And here I can go to the menu and say sample process. This will now uh, stop the application every 10 milliseconds for 10 seconds and count up how often um, we see we see each uh, method name appear in the stack traces of all the threads. So it basically stops the application 2,000 times and so that in all 2,000 times we have been in this test method. Okay, and from that 60 50 times uh, in the test work, and so on. And I prefer to uh, show the percent. So I see uh, this function spends a lot of time checking for my stack. I mean, stack is important, yeah, but at least this is. So the function, uh, it's still running. This test takes a few seconds more, okay. I can uh, take the newer soldier version And, uh, oh yeah, it finished, 69 seconds here. So I can take the new soldier version and run it again. Which one is the new one, which one is the old one? Uh, this is the old one, yeah. So I can click the button, I can go to activity monitor, find the app, sample, and hope that I'm quick enough. Yeah, I am. So now you see here, um, we see the debugger is now uh, the big CPU time taker here. And the actually here, uh, frame stack check, there's a stack check. So no longer a problem. And the thing got quicker. So still doing uh, 100,000 by 1,000, so 
a hundred million calls to a function takes time, even on this first MacBook. But it got faster. So, do we have questions? Otherwise, I can open another example. Activity monitor. Otherwise, we can uh, try to optimize our own applications. So, so let's uh, let's take maybe an example application. Something new, social, yeah. I figured out why the network is slow. We have 40 laptops here. Everyone wants to sync with the cloud, wants to do online backup, you know. <laughs> so, um, unable to display list of, okay. Okay, let me let me widen up. Have some fun. So let's say um, we do something. We do something slow. We take a list box. We all have the list box. So I put all list box here. So what can I do with the list box? I could fill it with rows. Everyone loves filling the list box with us, let's say. For e auth integer is one to 10,000. Oh, we need to measure, yeah, so M1 is uh, double, is system microseconds. M2, title is M2 minus M2. Oh, that, that's too big, we need to divide that. All right. So, milliseconds. So, let's see. Does it compile? Yeah. So, empty loop, 0.6. Okay. List box 1, add row. Hello, world. So, um, let's, let's give it three columns. So then you write maybe a code to tell this box. Let's say um, last added row one is like test. And you may also have something like uh, setting the row tag with some ID. Oh, this box one is last added. So this could be, could be some code you have. Oh yeah, you. You also got maybe a value here and say, I want to show that e to string. So let's run it again. Oh, I, I mistake and nobody taught me. So cell, cell, text add. Now still, still getting used to the new names and uh, I also hallucinate when I produce the text. <laughs> Sometimes type things that don't exist. So this takes, oh, 37 already. So now we would like to see where is most of the time wasted? What takes long here? Let's prepare for testing by making it an endless loop because this, would, this function would uh, quickly end and I want to optimize it so I need uh, it to run longer, so I have actually time to switch here to the activity monitor, find the process, press a combination to start the sample. So I can stop it before it drains my battery. 
this, not this one, this one, stop. So, and I can now go and see, hmm, let's see. Adding an item takes a lot of time because Sojo has to calculate the scroll bar every time. Okay, oh, Coco has to do that. So, let's see what, what takes also time, let's see. Oh, it allocates some memory, okay, probably for the new row. Insert item uh, takes a little bit of time. So, intro takes some time. To string takes some time, okay, oops. So, I go, I'm going through it and, and look for things that take time. Convert encoding. And a function you see repeatedly here is um, it's, it's asking the window for the list box. And this calls control by name. That's something um, Soja could optimize, but uh, we figured out that every call to list box one will go through the uh, list of controls to figure out where, where this control is. So if you don't have just one control, but you maybe have uh, 20 controls, this can be a problem. So let me just add a, a couple of controls. So, so we see that better. And maybe, uh, Oh, I have to take out the, the loop, otherwise you don't see anything. So, let's see how long this takes. So, still 37. Um, so, the list box is the first control. Um, oh, 38, okay. So, I, I like to optimize that away. And a common thing I tell people is, um, instead of having here, you go and uh, ask the, list, the window seven times for the list box, why don't we cache it? So I should really have brought um, an example um, that shows it better, but uh, we have really huge applications where, where this benefits a lot. So this line may look confusing, <laughs> Oh, I can put a self there. So we make a local variable. Here, this is a function call to do the lookup to find the list box before the loop. So we move this seven calls in front of the, the thing, uh, the loop. And, oh, 32. Mm -hmm. So we had previously five milliseconds spent for just finding the control. Okay, what else uh, could we do? There's another common trick uh, we, we used in the past. I'm not sure if it still works. Well, we hide the list box. So if it's hidden, some redrawing things don't happen. But th this used to be an optimization, I think, which worked better in, in previous versions. Wow. 23, okay. So. Any questions about that? Yeah, of course we could cache that. Uh, that's always a question about uh, whether this actually helps a lot, uh, but sure. Let me see. It doesn't, doesn't change the needle much. So. Okay. Um, yeah, well, then thank you. And if you have another question about performance, please uh, come by. And please measure before you mess up your project. Yeah.
I was a dim statement for the loop. Actually, um, the compiler is smart. It will collect all these dim statements over time and allocate it once at the top. So if you look at the machine code, all your dims are moved to the top, uh, basically happen at the start of the function. It just allocates maybe 100 bytes, 200 bytes, whatever is needed. And then basically this has no difference. The only thing uh, where, where you may be interested is uh, if it's an object, then you may see here uh, being uh, things locked. Like reference count increase, reference count decrease. Okay, well, let's have the coffee break. <laughs>